next, we have our distinguished guest, Dr. Garrick Israelian. He is an astrophysicist at the Institute of Astrophysics of the Canary Islands and has been there for over 25 years. He is also the creative director and spiritual father of Starmus Festival, which is a global festival of science, communication, and art that brings together the most brilliant minds on the planet. Hello, everyone. Now, thank you for this invitation. It's an honor to be at your summit. Uh, all right. So, about Starmus Festival, the, uh, the whole philosophy of this festival, the design of the festival, was done by myself and a very famous musician from Queen. Dr. Brian May, who is also an astronomer, so many of you probably are not aware of this, but Brian is an astronomer. So we designed this festival in 2010 to bring science to the general public. The, the goal of Starmus was really science communication, to use arts and music uh, to, to communicate science. And I have to tell you, I think Starmus today is probably the best festival on this planet. We have won this title twice. That was, uh, and we connect inspiration, knowledge, and innovation. We have won the title of number one science festival in Shanghai 2019, and it was most innovative science festival in London. We are a global festival of science communication and art that brings together the most brilliant minds on the planet. And our aim, the first, is to inspire the next generation of explorers and regenerate the spirit of discovery. Starmus combines art and music and science to enhance the science communication. And uh, since 2011, we, brought, uh, we organized about 150 lectures, among them 25 Nobel laureates, nine Apollo astronauts, engineers, inventors, and artists. And this is our advisory board, the Starmus advisory board is made of Richard Dawkins, two musicians we have in our board is Brian May and Peter Gabriel, Jill Tarter, the SETI pioneer, Tony Fadel, who is an inventor of iPhone, iPod, and the founder of Nest, Emmanuel Charpentier, the Nobel laureate who behind uh, CRISP, genetic engineering technology, uh, former director of Hubble Space Telescope, Bob Williams, and the editor of Astronomy Magazine, David Eicher. And we are so honored to have Stephen Hawking as our uh, advisory board member, uh, with Alexei Leonov, the first spacewalker, and uh, the father of nanotechnology, Nobel laureate, Harry Kroto. So, uh, I don't want to sell my festival, but this is actually what Stephen Hawking said about Starmus. He said, literally, he said, in a word be said, by so many terrible problems and so lacking in solutions, Starmus offers a ray of hope. And Starmus confirms his position as a unique debating chamber for the future of the human race. So we are so proud to have Stephen Hawking saying this about our festival. So it's really unique. And we are also super proud because we were inaugurated by Neil Armstrong. So, Neil Armstrong himself came to the first edition of Starmus Festival to inaugurate Starmus and gave a keynote speech and joined our panel discussion. So, since Neil, we had almost all Apollo astronauts joining the Starmus Festival. And there we have other celebrities, Neil deGrasse saying his opinion about Starmus and Hans Zimmer actually said, forget the Oscars, Starmus is the place to be. So, and that Brian May calls a Starmus is able to take your soul and mind to space. And that's something you cannot miss. We organized panel discussions with 11 Nobel laureates, amazing venues. We did five festivals, three in Spain and Canary Islands, one in Norway, one in Switzerland. 
And we had most extraordinary venues, like Ritz Carlton, Obama in Spain, Auditorium of Tenerife, Magma, so many different venues. And we have a brand for organizing a, a panel discussion, which is called 108 Minutes, which is the duration of Yuri Gagarin's first flight. So 108 minute panel discussion was dis uh, uh, organized inside the dome of the largest telescope in the world, which is based in Canary Islands on the island La Palma. So this panel discussion was so unique. The first one was with Neil Armstrong, uh, Alexei Leon, and Brian May, etc., and the second one with Stephen Hawking and so on. So we, and these are Starmer's books, three different editions edited by myself and Brian May, and the last one was a tribute to Stephen Hawking called Beyond the Horizon, where we had 12 Nobel laureates lecturing. These are actually all public lectures. So the lectures are given for students and for general public. And different CDs and, and uh, DVDs. We are organizing a star party with lots of telescopes. We bring to the place where we have a clear sky. We do a live music stargazing until 2 and 3 a.m. and a very nice place for networking. Amazing lectures, Lucy Kent is a 3D, is a lecture with 3D glasses by Brian and Alexei Leonov gave a talk with, with a simple chalk about his first spacewalk and how it happens that he, he was not the first person to walk on the moon. Because many people do not know that in, in ex-Soviet program he was going to be the first man on the moon. So it was a very, very unique lectures at Starmus, and Brian Cox, Neil deGrasse Tyson, etc., etc. We have a mind-blowing concert with Stephen Hawking on stage with a rock band called Anathema, doing a cover of Pink Floyd's uh, "Keep Talking." <laughs> so this is so things like this were done only by Starmus. It's it's really impossible to find anything even close to this, even close to this. Here is another concert, Hans Zimmer, Steve Vai, Luzon Symphony Orchestra. We, we rock a lot. Starmus is really about rock music, classical music, electronic music. We mix up everything with the best artists, with the best artists. Chris Hatfield doing his famous space oddity and Hans Zimmer and so on. Sarah Brightman at Starmus with Tenerife Symphony Orchestra. And here is Ryan with the Luzern Symphony Orchestra, Hans Zimmer, and etc. All rock and roll. We were in Norway uh, with a big uh, city program. By f with, we, we brought together 50,000 people. 50,000 people for kids doing workshops. Uh, uh, you can see the VR experience, electronic music, etc. So Norway was really amazing. We have organized, we, we have created the Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication, which is given to those, who, who, to musicians, to filmmakers and science writers. So those who, who communicate science, who promote science. So for instance, if you are a musician and you compose music for a sci-fi or for a documentary about science, and you help with your music to sell science, to promote science, that you can get the Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication. So it's based, the medal is based on a sketch done by Alexei Leonov of Stephen Hawking. You can see on the medal, one side is a sketch of Stephen made by Alexei, and on the other side, we have a first spacewalk of Alexei Leonov and the uh, and the guitar of Brian May, the famous red special of Queen. And Omega, being a partner of Starmus and the sponsor of Starmus, has designed a special watch, which is a, a special edition of Speedmaster, designed by Starmus Stephen Hawking Medal. So we give this watch to the winners of the Hawking Medal. So um, these are the winners of the medal. Jean-Michel Jarre, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Buzz Aldrin, and uh, Elon Musk, Brian Eno. Uh, the last medal was given to Elon Musk in 2019 for 
communicating science actually turned out that Elon, through his social media, is doing enormous, enormous uh, uh, communication of science and technology. So he permanently speaks about going to Mars, Tesla, Solar Loop. So an entire 80% of his social media is about science and technology. And we acknowledge this work. We recognize this work done by Elon. So he got this, uh, the, the Medal of Science Communication in 2019. And this is a statement from Norwegian media that when we were in Norway, so they stated that for the first time in Norway, science and learning were devoted the same amount of space in the media as major sporting events. So it's really a, a challenge that science festival when competing with sport events. You know, it's, 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 it's really serious. So we are stepping into territory of sports, which is really impossible for science. At least it has been impossible for science. And Bloomberg called us most impossible science festival. We are out of this festival according to Sun. So all major media, Guardian Times, New York Times, BBC, they were at Starmer's telling that this is actually out of this world festival. So, why Earth, a meeting at which the most brilliant minds on the planet transmit their passion for knowledge, etc. And I'm very proud of this picture from the last festival. We bring the, together four or five last Apollo astronauts with Hans Zimmer, with rock musicians. You can see Brian May and, 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 and scientists. And this is the picture of which I'm very, very proud is a tribute to Stephen Hawking we did in 2016. And it was actually the only tribute to Stephen Hawking. With uh, 11 Nobel laureates, again musicians, you can see Hans Zimmer, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Chris Hatfield, so almost everyone who is, who is <laughs> in the world of science and space are here. And next festival will take place this year between September 5 and 10 in Armenia. So Starmus goes to Armenia, Starmus 6, and it's called 50 Years on Mars. Because apparently, and I think many people are not aware, that in 1971 was the first soft landing on Mars by Soviet Mars 3. And, and one of the reasons that we go to Armenia, because apparently, the small rover that was on board of this Mars 3 mission, called Probe-M, uh, was uh, made by an Armenian engineer, Alexander Kemurjian, who was also father of the Lunokhod. So apparently they, and we are going to celebrate 50 years on Mars, which doesn't mean that the whole festival will be about Mars. It's just a title. So probably we will have one day of lectures about Mars, and the rest of the festival, as always, covers different aspects of science, genetic engineering, AI, computer science, physics, everything. And so we will have 10 Nobel Prize winners and 15 astronauts, lots of scientists, engineers, musicians. And uh, this is our venue in Armenia. And we expect Peter Gabriel, we expect Hans and Brian and We'll do amazing star parties, stargazing in Armenia. And we are planning to do our 108-minute panel discussion in a super old observatory, which is called Karahunj, which in translation means Stonehenge. Strange enough, the name is exactly it coincides with the Stonehenge. Stone is car in Armenian, and henge, no one knows the meaning of henge. is probably, and also in English, there is no word for henge. So it's called the Karahunj, and we will do a panel discussion in this uh, old observatory. So welcome to Starmus Armenia from September 5 to 10 in Armenia, and you can check for more in the starmus.com. Thank you very much.